Know where you are before you light your next cigarette. Workplace smoking areas are fast disappearing as companies throughout the United States modify smoking regulations. It's a matter of health, cost savings, and respect for the rights of individual employees. Well, sorry about that. At the Upjohn Company, management's continuing effort to provide a safe and healthy work environment has resulted in revised smoking practices. The new policy will be implemented in two phases. The basic principle behind the new restrictions is that smoking will only be permitted in non-hazardous designated areas which allow for reasonable separation between smokers and non-smokers. The old policy prohibited smoking in laboratories, production and manufacturing locations, designated areas in cafeterias, snack bars, lounges and foyers, and other places determined by management as non-smoking areas. The first phase of the new practices, implemented July 1, 1986, continues those restrictions and further bans smoking in conference rooms, specific restrooms and their lounges, auditoriums during meetings lasting less than half a day, and company vehicles when a non-smoker is present or the vehicle is designated as a non-smoking area. Individual health and the rights of all employees were prime considerations in the development of the new practices. Studies have long indicated the adverse effect on one's own health for smokers. Absenteeism and accident rates are significantly higher for smokers than for non-smokers, as is utilization of health care delivery plans. The majority of home office employees, some 70%, do not smoke, and many are concerned about the effects of passive smoking the indirect inhalation of tobacco smoke present in the air. Several studies have suggested that passive smoking may result in diminished lung function and may increase the risk of lung cancer and death due to coronary heart disease. After October 1st, smoking will be permitted only in designated sections of cafeterias, lunch rooms, snack bars and lobbies, certain specified restrooms and lounges, entrance foyers, and outdoor locations if not designated non-smoking. Smoking will be allowed in auditoriums if a meeting is going to last more than half a day and if reasonable separation can be maintained between smokers and non-smokers. Smoking in individual offices will not be allowed. The new practices reflect a nationwide trend toward smoking restrictions and the attitude of the majority of U.S. adults. A recent Gallup poll indicated that 75% of all adults, 62% of current smokers, 85% of non-smokers, and 78% of former smokers agree that smokers should refrain from smoking in the presence of non-smokers. And 79% of adults, including 76% of current smokers, said companies should limit smoking to certain assigned areas. To assist employees in adjusting to the new practices, the Upjohn Company will offer smoking cessation classes for the next 12 months. Information and counseling are available through occupational health and safety. It may help employees defeat a habit now prohibited in the majority of company locations. A hot summer day, a perfect time for a cool treat. On this day in this Flint Meyer Thrifty Acres, customers enjoyed just such a treat, watermelon, courtesy of the Asgro Seed Company. As part of a unique marketing effort, Asgro conducted watermelon taste tests this summer at Meyer stores in Flint and Kalamazoo. And how did this one meet your expectations? Was it Very sweet? Very good. Okay, thank you so much. The watermelon variety used for the taste tests was Asgro's Mirage Melon, which was easily identified by shoppers because it carried a special sticker. The purpose of the sticker was to establish brand identity with the end consumer. And the purpose of the taste test was to gather some information that we could use in the uh, marketing chain for um, supermarket managers, brokers, shippers, and last but by no means least, the growers. 
To Culling's knowledge, the Mirage Project is the most extensive ASGRO effort to market a product directly to consumers. It's a unique project for ASGRO because we've never attempted to gain the acceptance of a product by the end consumer before we've gained it from the grower. It can be very hard to establish a new product with a grower. Um, and we feel that by doing this project, it will help him. It will help to gain acceptance of the product at all levels, from grower right through the chain. Produced at an Asgrow facility in Chile and elsewhere around the globe, Mirage seed has been sold in the United States for four years. Mirage melons offer consumers and stores, shippers, and growers obvious advantages over such competitors as the familiar Charleston Gray variety. From the consumer, first of all, the advantages would be excellent flavor made up of high sugar content and good texture, a very, very attractive color, which is important for watermelon. For the supermarket manager, uh, a very fine shape that he can divide uh, and cut and uh, make attractive displays. For the shipper, it's an excellent melon that uh, ships over long distances without breaking or damaging. And for the grower, it's got an excellent yield. Results of the taste tests were quite positive. Consumers expressed a strong preference for melons with the characteristics of the Mirage. And as hoped, interest generated by the project is working its way through the marketing chain. The results have been remarkable. Uh, from this project so far and if I can quote one quick example the broker or one of the brokers that we dealt with in Florida has asked us to supply him all the seed that we have available from our 1986 crop for the 1987 planting remarkable reaction with success already apparent the Mirage concept is sprouting elsewhere Collins says similar projects are already in the works for other Asgro plant varieties We came, we saw, we partied. The Kalamazoo Upjohn Centennial celebration proved to be a big success. More than 15,000 employees, retirees, and guests came to the Hilton over a 19-night period in May and June for Upjohn's birthday party. Work crews put in long hours assembling the complicated setup for the Upjohn program. And when it was done, the Hilton was transformed into a banner-filled festival. Guests sampled food from five international buffets. After dinner and drinks, the crowds moved upstairs for a special performance by the Kalamazoo Symphony, including a piece entitled Celebration by composer C. Curtis Smith, commissioned by Upjohn in honor of the centennial. In between three centennial slide programs, members of Upjohn's senior management summed up the spirit of the company's 100th anniversary. This is our 100th anniversary as a business and as a vital contributor to the health and well-being of people around the world. This century of business growth and scientific progress is an achievement in which you and all Upjohn employees may take pride. Without the dedicated performance of you and your predecessors, it would not have been possible. It was an evening to celebrate, and as the chairman noted, employees were the evening's focus. Upjohn employees showed they weren't too shy to have a good time when video cameras turned their way. To the tune of Kalamazoo, one of four songs written for use at the celebration, let's take a look at some people caught by Upjohn's candid camera. A salute to the employees who keep the quality up. Well, there's a pretty little city near the Great Lake. Just a three-hour drive from Detroit or Chicago, that's all it takes. If you've heard the name, you know it's nearly as famous as Timbuktu. Get your voices in gear, let me hear.
The hub is now in gear. A new communication center located in the well-traveled center hallway of the downtown research complex, the hub was officially open for business at a recent ribbon-cutting ceremony. Now, as I cut the ribbon for the hub here, I would like to dedicate this to better communication and to all of the employees of PRD and other units that live down here in uh, research. And together uh, with me cutting the ribbon is Ward May, who is responsible ultimately for the execution of this thing. So Ward, you and I together will snip the ribbon, okay? There we go. The hub features small conference rooms, meeting areas, computer equipment designed for walk-up use, video monitors, and an electronic news display. It's designed to provide research employees a place to conduct informal discussions, meet with outside vendors, or take a quick turn on a computer terminal. Want to know what's new? Meet me at the hub. You may remember when Irene Ryan, better known as Granny Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies, was used to help promote Upjohn's Cherokee D cough syrup in 1968. That was then, and this is now. company uses celebrity representatives, a spoonful of information is added to help the medicine go down. I now have an opportunity to go around the country on behalf of the Upjohn Company to, uh, on an educational tour, to let people out there know that there are new alternatives to pain, that those who are sufferers, the chronic 100 million people who suffer from, as you had mentioned before, uh, backache, headache, and, and arthritic pain, don't necessarily have to... Uh, suffer needlessly anymore. I mean, there's... Rocky Blyer took a lot of hits on the football field and has a unique understanding of pain. He has hit the talk show road the past two years under Upjohn's sponsorship to talk about pain and what can be done to overcome it. He's not alone. Racquetball champion Lynn Adams has rheumatoid arthritis and is another effective Upjohn representative. I was 19 when I started playing racquetball, and I was concerned that my arthritis would affect my athletics. But my doctor put me on a program of medication that helped relieve the pain and the swelling and told me that with discipline, I could continue to compete and help control the disease. Like Blyer, Adams has represented Upjohn on media tours the past two years, helping create product awareness through health education. Athletes are not the only ones telling their stories. I was playing in a club, and during the first set, my fingers got so sore that I could hardly finish. The first thing that came to my mind was that this is the end, it's all over for me. And a few days later, it got so bad that I finally had to go to my doctor. It was in my shoulders, in my knees, and unfortunately, in my fingers. But I was very lucky, because I was able to get to my doctor before it had progressed, and he gave me some non-strenuous exercises to limber up the joints and also some medications to help control the pain. By emphasizing information as well as promotion, Upjohn seeks to enhance its reputation as a company that cares. Don't let the deadline for the annual Employee News Services Photo Contest sneak up on you. Get snapping. Entries must be received by September 1st. For contest rules and entry forms, contact Employee News at 49503.